You're listening to an Anazal Ministries podcast. Why does Donald Duck love Latin America so much? Is it because of his friends, the beaches, or the women? Today, we're going to be discussing the three Caballeros film, continuing our Disney film series. Guys, this is Systematic Geekology. We are the Priest of the Geeks. I'm Joshua Noll. I'm one of the co-hosts, also one of the co-hosts of the Whole Church podcast. And uh, I couldn't even tell you the first time I've seen this movie, but I've spent literally somehow all day today watching things involving the three caballeros which i didn't know was possible until today when i did it i'm joined by two of the other priests of the geeks uh the one and only christian ashley what you've been geeking out on man what have i been geeking out on well joshua i played this really fun game called uh villainous but the star wars edition and i managed to (laughs) destroy my good friend Uh, joshua noel in that fight and my new good friend izzy as general Mm. grievous yeah. Collecting all my lightsabers. It was excellent. You know, uh, I'm not sure if I would say ex- was excellent. Was it, you know, was that, but <laughs> I'm also joined by the one, the only, the great, the the legend, Darth Tiberius of Juan. TJ Blackwell, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah what mm-hmm. you been geeking out on? <laughs> uh, gotta be honest, nothing. <laughs> mm. Have you seen the new Bad Batch? season yet i haven't i've been too busy so it's pretty good that's that's sad yeah well that being said we're gonna jump right into this one today i am so excited as always i'm always excited when we get to talk disney um especially some of these older more classic films um catch everybody up we started this disney series so honestly we we kind of did a a a soft reboot at some point (laughs) Um, earlier last year, we had the idea to do some of the older Disney films and some of our hosts were doing stuff from like the early 2000s. And I'm like, that's not that's not retro Disney. <laughs> retro Disney is like 1940s. <laughs> um, so we kind of did a soft reboot. We discussed the the Disney eras and all the different eras of Disney films. We had a whole huge episode of that. I will drop a link down below so you can listen to that, catch up with the general structure of what we're talking about. Then we started going through some of the movies and we're going to do two from each era. So we did two movies from the golden era. We did a review of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, the first ever full length feature animated film. And we did another review of Pinocchio. So it was fun. Today, we're skipping ahead. We're getting out of the golden era of Disney into what is known as the wartime era or the package film era. And the dates for that, it's uh, the films between 1942 and 1949, which I'm sure, as you can guess, is because there was a world war going on. That's why it is called that. It has made some significant impacts on the films. It's also why it's called the package film era. Disney had a lot less money. People weren't spending that much during the war so in order to kind of save money they got creative and basically started doing these films that were a bunch of mini films almost put together you would have two to ten together um today we are starting with the three caballeros so you will see there's a bunch of shorts that they do in it that kind of make up the movie so they divided it up that way um next time we'll be doing the uh ichabod and mr toad so they just did two short films and made it into one big movie. So today we're talking about the three caballeros. We're going to talk about the characters and the movie. So the three caballeros are Donald Duck, who's a duck. I know. Oh, so surprising. No one knew. Hmm. Um, Jose Carioca, uh, the parrot and Panchito Pistoles, the rooster. Also, did y'all know that this movie, the three caballeros was just a sequel, a soft sequel to Saludo. I did as soon as I was doing my research. And I watched it a couple days ago to prepare for this. Did you watch Salados Amigos? I did. I can't make it through it. (laughs) (laughs) I don't blame you. It's so like somehow it's slower than the three Cabrios. I'm like, this is. Yeah. For like a 42 minute long film. It it is a little draggy. Hard to get into. Yeah. It's a lot of like you find your mind wandering and you're like, wait a minute. 
I'm watching something right now. <laughs> but it is the introduction I, of Jose. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's the introduction of Jose, which is a phenomenal character, especially back then because he had a cigar all the time. I like that better. I think he looked cooler. <laughs> um, but but it was just it was funny to me because it's like it's 42 minutes, and yeah, I'm ADHD, so it's hard for me to sit through anything that's too boring anyway. But I'm like, man, <laughs> this is rough. <laughs> Um. Yeah. Yeah. TJ, have you ever seen Salados Amigos? No. No, I haven't. Do you ever plan on trying to see Salados Amigos? I could. I guess. I don't recommend it. I mean, yeah. if you're a completionist, yes. It's not. Yeah, worth I'm not. It. It's not worth it. <laughs> um. So. <laughs> so. Uh. I know we're already kind of hitting on it. Uh. I'll start with TJ since we've already talked about our take with Salados Amigos. TJ, what is your earliest memory, either watching this film or encountering the characters of the three Caballeros? Yeah, so in like 2014, I went to Disney World mm -hmm. and we went to Epcot and rode, I think it was called something different at the time, but the boat ride in the in pyramid Mexico. in Mexico. Yeah, um, right now it's called the, the, um, the Grand Fiesta Tour. Yeah. I don't know what it was called when it started, but... I, I didn't for some reason I thought that was there for a long time, but that wasn't put in there till 2007. Really? Isn't that weird? Hmm. Yeah. But yeah, that's the first time I ever saw the Three Caballeros. Hmm. Fascinating. Have you have you seen the movie The Three Caballeros? Yeah, I, I watched it <laughs> a few years ago. Okay. <laughs> and just because, like, figured I might as well. Yeah. It's not a bad movie, but it it is like if you're lining it up with the other ones we've reviewed, if you're lining it up with like Snow White and Pinocchio, it doesn't quite measure up for me. <laughs> But it's not a bad movie by any means. Uh, Christian, what was your first memory with the three Caballeros? See, I was trying to figure that out because I remember back in the day, Disney would release some VHSs where they would just have sing-along videos. And I'm trying to remember if the three Caballeros was a part of that or if I watched the movie first when it came out on VHS. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, don't worry about it. It's old technology that's dead. Yeah. But it would definitely have been like mid, late 90s. That's fair. That's fair. I'm... <sighs> I think the first time I saw it had to be early 2000s because I, I saw them, the characters, on House of Mouse. Mm. And I remember thinking, I, I guess as a kid at that point, right? Yeah, I would have been like maybe 12-ish. Not old. I was not old. <laughs> but I was, um, I remember thinking, hey, I want to see more of these guys. And basically pestering my parents until they found me the movie that they're from. <laughs> And then I don't think I finished it as a kid. Like, I don't think I fully watched the movie through until I was older, because even though there's a lot of fun parts, like Pablo the Penguin, Burrito the Donkey, there's also a lot of parts in this film that are like, uh, what? Mine just kind of wandering, whatever. Much like Celados Amigos, but not as bad. <laughs> yeah, I can. It must have been so much harder to find out what those three characters are from back then. Yeah, <laughs> just knew what they were. That was it. <laughs> Yeah, back when it was uh, Disney had the vault and we didn't have Disney Plus. Yeah, yep. Much harder you know, ages. You can just pull out your phone and look it up. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> well, plus I was 10. I didn't have a phone when I was 10. I guess kids these days do, though. A this is an old man rant, though. That's our other podcast where Christian <laughs> and I have old man rants. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that being said, I, I wanted to run some fun facts about the movie. Um, first, though, who do I want to pick on? Christian. Yes. Do you want to give everybody just a quick layout of what this movie is? Three Caballeros is a wonderful Disney film, which has next to no plot outside <laughs> of the fact that we are encouraged, especially in the 40s at that time, to learn about our uh, Latin and South American neighbors, mm -hmm. uh, the different regions they come from, because obviously an American audience at a time would especially not know as much as we would now uh, to those who look out for such things. And this is used as an introduction, like, hey, there's more cultures out there than besides America, especially in our own region of the world. And it goes for Donald is our set piece here, our framing device, uh, to him getting messages from Jose, I think, at first, if I'm remembering correctly, because mm -hmm. uh, he's his cousin. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. <laughs> fact check me later. Yeah. Always fact check me. Yeah. And it just goes through different film reels uh, going from <laughs> Brazil to Mexico, to Uruguay, and a little bit in the other uh, South yeah. American nations. And we get Antarctica as well with our South Pole, friend. naturally. Yeah. yeah. 
all the way to the Galapagos. And it's just uh, Donald eventually meeting Jose and Panchito and realizing that they have a camaraderie together about chasing women and <laughs> all that wonderful uh, yeah. part of the film. And it just kind of ends. Yeah, it was – Um, if you ever did watch House of Mouse – and how there was like a general really vague plot to each episode, but it was mostly just an excuse to show short films. That's all this was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> um, so some fun facts. Uh, in the very beginning, you see it's Donald's birthday and it says Friday the 13th because that is Donald's birthday. Which a lot of people, fun, funnily enough, because there's another film, I forget what it is, that says his birthday is in March. So people put together March, Friday the 13th, and kind of came up with it. I think it was like 1925. They think Donald Duck must have been born. But Disney also came out and officially said that June 9th was Donald Duck's birthday later on. But then in The Legend of the Three Caballeros that came out in 2018, it's Friday the 13th and it's Donald's birthday. (laughs) So his birthday is either March 13th or June 9th. And Disney seems to not be able to make up its mind. So that's a fun one. Well, just a fun fact. The the Three Caballeros takes place in an alternate dimension is what you forgot. Mm, okay. Yeah. Clearly. There's two different Donald Ducks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I mean, to be fair, the, I think the one that was born on June 9th is just a much angrier version. The one that was born on Friday the 13th, it seems pretty chill comparatively. He, he likes women too much, but he doesn't seem angry. Donald seems like a much different character in these. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't get quite explosive in these. Yeah. Yeah. But, I, you know, I don't know. I think I'd, I'd rather take explosive, angry Donald than women-obsessed Donald. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit jarring but, to get into that. Yeah, it was pretty weird. Yeah, uh, we'll get we'll get more to that <laughs> in a bit. Um, this was also possibly the first animated film to break the fourth wall. Can't find anything that could verify or say otherwise, but it's definitely one of the earliest to do that. It definitely came before Deadpool or She-Hulk, so... <laughs> there's that <laughs> yeah yeah that's Some so it's stuff. so incredibly hard to find the first anything to break the fourth wall yeah hey look it up you'll get results from like 1914 1912 yes just working on hiring fact checkers for a systematic ecology oh Not yeah working out. well the first thing i googled it was like something that was in the 1950s was the first animated film that broke the fourth wall but i'm like um nope this is in the 1940s and it did it. So that's clearly not right. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, anyway, uh, they advertised it as the first animated live action co- crossover film, which is not true. Disney did it before this even. It just wasn't technically a feature length film. So they mm. decided it didn't count. But mm. that's what they advertised it as. Um, they stole scene from Fantasia, especially in that last bit that kind of seems just really trippy. If you pay attention. Some of the stuff is just directly pulled out of Fantasia. (laughs) And another one that's fun, they focused a lot more on technique than this because they didn't have the funds to film different kinds of art or different technology to build the film. So instead, they focus more on technique than that or on storytelling. The New York Times did an article criticizing this film being like, hey, uh, there was no plot. And they're kind of objectifying women. Even in the 40s, the New York Times was like, hey, this isn't this isn't good. Well, you'll especially see this in Saludos Amigos in the way that they're like, you have scenes of them just like uh, filming them as they're drawing <laughs> or just <laughs> the landscapes they're looking at. And it's, it's Perfect. a testament that they're <laughs> able to make this work in Three Caballeros, even though they're like, there is no plot. Yeah, no, no. It's literally just uh, it's Donald's birthday. So we got some presents from his friends in South America. And these presents somehow lend to short stories for no reason. <laughs> It's fine, though. So so we talk about it being a package film. There's five main sections or short stories, whatever you want to call them. I just kind of want to walk through them real quick before we we rate this movie. Uh, first, you had Pablo the Penguin. What, what did you all think of Pablo the Penguin? I love Pablo. <laughs> oh, I'm a big fan of penguins in general. Yeah. So big, big thumbs up for me. Yeah. Uh, penguin appearances are always uh, a good thing in my book. And it has a really good message about how you're never all you're never going to be satisfied where you're at. You're always going to be seeking something else. And that's just how we as humans work. Doesn't matter if birds do it, too. Yeah. Yeah. I um, the only problem I had with it is it said most penguins live in the South. And I'm like, yes, that's actually not true. Turns out there's actually more types of penguins that like warm weather than there is that like cold weather. But whatever. Um, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand. Yeah. But hey, for kids, 
you think of penguins, you think of cold. It was a good story. I thought it was really funny that the narrator's just straight up like, never satisfied. That's human nature. And then Donald Duck's like, that's true. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that was a, a really deep random moment in this nonsensical non-plot film. But it, sure, it just, I'll take it. <laughs> but yeah, it's good. Yeah. Funny. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm just disappointed, like, of all the stuff in this film, some stuff gets reused or, like, some of the characters, like, shown again other places. You can't find Pablo the Penguin anywhere. And that's disappointing because I love him. <laughs> one character that you can find in exactly one other place comes from the next short film thing that we get. Burrito the Flying Donkey. Uh, what are what are y'all, what were y'all's thoughts about Burrito? <laughs> this is one of those things you watch it as a kid and you just accept it. And then as an adult, I'm going like, what mythology is this story based off of? I was looking, (laughs) I was pouring into like Uruguayan (laughs) mythologies of the different Native American tribes that are there or First Nations, whatever the term is at this point in time. And I found nothing. So if there is something out there, please enlighten me, people, (laughs) because they just made up a story, which you can do. Donkey plus bird. Funny. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I just it was weird. It felt to me like it was trying to be Dumbo. Yeah. I could see that a little bit. But it was also a long time ago that I watched this, to be fair. I really I liked Burrito. I, 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 it very much, though, it felt like someone just was imagining what a donkey with wings would look like and drew a really cute cartoon. And they were like, oh, well, we got to use that. Oh, it's very and they just come too. up with a reason to use it. I mean, you have the narrator interacting with his younger self. Yeah, it's that a was very fun. fun reveal. And you know, the relationship they have with each other and especially uh, as they grow as friends. Is very sweet. Yeah. Until the end where they try to like use his flying to like hoodwink some people out of money and then they fly off. And then what kills me is the narrator straight up says neither the donkey or myself were ever seen again. And I'm like, what? Why? (laughs) What happened to you? (laughs) Like, how are you telling us the story? (laughs) That seemed very intense. Like, what? What What do you mean? We're never seen again. (laughs) It's like yeah, that, they that moment in Pirates of the Caribbean where they talk about the Black Pearl, and it's like, no one's ever lived to tell the tale. How are their tails done? <laughs> yeah. I don't think they took the money either. <sighs> nope. Just flew off to never be seen again <laughs> for whatever reason. Uh, some so At some point in between the short stories, I, I don't think this one counts, but there was just this quick scene with the uh, Arakuan bird, or Ari as he has later become affectionately known as. Uh I find him incredibly annoying. I don't like him in any of the things I've ever seen him in. <laughs> well, it's another baffling decision too, because you see in like what they've done, they've they have sent people down to learn about the cultures and the local fauna and flora. And the Arakuan bird looks nothing like a bird mm-hmm. that has a similar name. It's honestly it's, I yeah. think it's there to appeal to kids. They made up their own bird. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's I don't know what came first, this or Woody the Woodpecker, because it felt like their version of Woody the Woodpecker. <laughs> Why don't I look that up? I'm pretty sure Woody came first. I'm not positive because I mean, like Three Caballeros is old. Mm. Well, Woody the Woodpecker is 2017, apparently. Oh, <laughs> no, 1940. Yeah. So it would have been like right before this. Yeah. Yeah. So that that might be what it was. Disney said, we need one of those. <laughs> yeah. I like yeah. his design. He's a funky little dude. But he is annoying. Yeah, but he's a funky little dude. And I love that. Yeah, he's not meant <laughs> for you fair. and your your That's jaded fair. old years. <laughs> yeah, don't like little birds. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, then there was the the I don't I don't know the uh, advertisements for other countries were the <laughs> were a large part of the film. Um, so Jose somehow put himself in one of the gifts and brought Donald to this place in Brazil that he also had never been to, apparently, that he was like, this is the best place ever. And Donald's like, have you ever been? He's like, no. (laughs) Uh, So they go, and Donald gets obsessed with some lady and just follows her around for the whole entirety of this short film. Um, (laughs) Did y'all get anything out of this part? I like (laughs) For real, though, I think this scene is important. I will justify it. Because think about what time we're in. This is the 40s interracial mixing not seen as appropriate for the most part in america so even though this is a cartoon bird probably donald is white so you have a very positive i mean for the time fair for its day of it is okay Hmm. for this to happen well see i have a lot of minds i don't want to get too deep into this at the moment but 
a lot of what Disney is at this time is just war propaganda because of how much money they were taking from the U.S. military. Um, the reason they made this was because the U.S. and Germany were kind of both buying for uh, for South America. And the U.S. just kind of told Disney they had to make films about South America. Now, this is what you're doing. We're paying for your existence. So this is what you will do. And Donald Duck at that point in the 40s is known as Disney's Navy guy, right? Like when you see him, you're used to seeing him in the Navy commercials. He is U.S. Army. And I, I kind of feel like it's pretty problematic that the the Navy guy is just going to these other countries following women around. And I don't know. Very yeah, true to I life. I love it. <laughs> I mean, like I said, fair for its day. Not exactly what we would consider to be fine, but that's obviously uh, chronological snobbery at work once again. But I mean, even in its own time, it got a lot of criticism for that. As it should have. Yeah. But I'm also saying at the same time, this was important for American audiences to see because most of them would not believe this would be something. And I'm probably reading way too much into this. So correct me if at all possible that, you know, it is OK for a, a white man to be with, you know, an Hispanic woman. Yeah. Well, and that's um, that's where you, you have this line of, well, we don't like that they're objectifying women. We don't like that. But also the fact that even though they were doing it because of war propaganda, they were trying to add value to South America and their countries. It's kind of like, that's still kind of a net good, but it's like, ah, where do we, this is somehow both good and bad. Like, I don't know what to do with this. How, how did the three caveats become the most morally great thing we've talked about all year? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, I don't, I don't know, guys. <laughs> Well, so then you move away from Brazil and get into something that's far less problematic by being the exact same thing when they go to Mexico. <laughs> and we're introduced to a new character, Panquito Pistoles, who comes out with his pistols and just shoots up things for absolutely no reason other than, hey, Americans like guns. Give the bird some guns. Um, he's a rooster from Mexico, and he just starts being like, hey, we're all friends now. And we're the three caballeros, which is the three gentlemen. And they do one of the greatest Disney song numbers, just period, point blank. I love it. I love that. Just if you were just to take that one music video out, I would watch that a lot more than I would watch this movie because <laughs> I like it so much. Um, uh, even though through all the different renditions over the years, Disney seems to not under like not know what to do with the second line, because originally it's the three caballeros. Three gay caballeros. <laughs> and then at some point it becomes the three caballeros, the three brave caballeros. And then sometimes it's three caballeros. Yes, three caballeros. <laughs> like, hmm, y'all just That's don't know what to do with that extra word anymore. <laughs> you just can't say say gay anymore. So, <laughs> Well, it's classic language evolving over time. And how do you handle that? I mean, it meant yeah. something back then that doesn't mean now. And in the same way that queer uh, itself used to mean like strange or different and now has over time been adopted by the LGBT community to mean something far different. Yeah, I um. Well, <laughs> to get a little controversial on things, I do enjoy some episodes of South Park, and I think they did a really good job with some of this word evolution things when they did an episode about um, fags, but they you know use the full word and how it meant sticks, and then it came to be a derogatory term for homosexuals. And now they're just like, oh, no, no. Now that word just means people we don't like. It has nothing to do with homosexuality at all. And it's it was kind of true at the moment. It's still a problematic word, which is why I don't say it personally. But it, it was really interesting to watch how they did that and how they were trying to get it officially declared by the government that this word no longer has anything to do with that. And it just means people that are annoying, like bikers. Yes. A classic yeah. episode. Yeah, it was, it was funny stuff. But I mean, it's the same thing. I mean, at that point, even your Christmas songs had gay tidings of joy, right? Yep. And now it's like, uh, we that that word means something different now. Well, it's the same way, too, with like uh, was it the scary ghost stories line from uh, uh, which uh, Christmas song is that? You can see you hear it aired on a Christian station and they'll t they'll say something completely different. That has nothing to do with ghost stories because we can't talk what? about the supernatural. That's... <laughs> That's a whole other thing I would like to talk about. Like, why? Why I, Christians got it, not like? That. <laughs> I've got it on the list. I um, it, it was funny to me because I feel like a lot of this happened while I was growing up, and I saw some people, and I still see some people who just refuse to say Holy Spirit because for a long time it was Holy Ghost, <laughs> and then it's like, well, we can't use the word ghost, so now it's Holy Spirit. But some people are mad that they say Holy Spirit, so they say we have to say ghost, and it's one of the most like 
nonsensical Christian debates that I've ever heard. And I find it amusing every time I hear people talk about it. I'm like, wow, that's that's funny. Yeah, I disagree. I think it's sacrilege if you don't say Holy Ghost. (laughs) (laughs) Why we ever decided to make a job that it's already so difficult, more difficult by adding more hurdles to jump over is a thing that infuriates me about modern day Christianity. Yeah. Well, you know, that's why we don't like the sensitive liberals because they don't let us say certain words that we want to say. But how dare you say Holy Ghost? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Interesting. So moving right along. So <laughs> <laughs> what a transition. Yeah. One of the things I did appreciate about this film, especially when we're in Brazil and Mexico, the the live action characters. Um, I what's funny is I originally had just assumed they just found people of different skin tones and said, Hey, here be dancers. Because you know, it was the 1940s at that point in time, there wasn't a lot of care of if you casted someone who was actually that country, that origin, that whatever, but Disney actually got like popular dancers from Brazil and Mexico to play those parts. Like it wasn't just some random people that happened to kind of look like that. (laughs) So that's kind of cool. Yeah, even with that, like a uh, voice acting wise, uh, which is its own thing, they have both Jose and Panchito are voiced by Latin actors, voice actors, which yeah. is unheard of for the time. Yeah, yeah, I, they did that really well. Um, they also did really well with the very last part of the film. So we talked about four, five parts. So you had uh, you had Pablo, you had Burrito, Brazil, Mexico. And then you just have this last part that's basically just a psychedelic trip. Um you are really questioning if someone snuck mushrooms into your food by the time you get to the end of this film because it just gets weird, like nonsensical. There's just random shapes a few times. Uh, sometimes a woman turned into a cactus for some reason. Um, it was it was weird. <laughs> what, what, did, what did y'all think about the ending? Because I find a lot of people hate the ending of this film, and I loved it. <laughs> I'm like, this was great. It was so weird. I mean, it's pink elephants from Dumbo all over again. Yeah. And... <laughs> I mean, it's one of the weirdest parts of that movie, and it's one of the weirdest parts of this movie in an already weird movie. So I just accepted it and moved on with my life. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I I love a good, we don't know what's going on here. (laughs) Yeah, it really felt like they didn't know how to end this thing. So they were just like, you guys are artists. Draw some things. (laughs) We've had no plot. We can't end with a plot. (laughs) Yeah, we can't have a plot now. What are we going to do? Yeah, just draw whatever. (laughs) <laughs> go crazy but like just the music and the colors and everything going on i was like that was a lot of fun i enjoyed the 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 chaos i was like this is great chaos this is positive vibe chaos <laughs> and i'm i'm good with that but i found a lot of people when they review this movie are just like that was the worst part i hated that i'm like why, why? that was great <laughs> it was weird but it was great <laughs> for me i think the worst part was both the was the the beginning of the brazil part where he's just trying to like sing a very slow song and explain what Brazil is. And I'm like, guys, I don't, I don't need this. <laughs> I'm here to watch goofy animation. <laughs> Speaking of goofy, he is in a Saludos Amigos. Yeah, really? Yeah. Yep. Wish he was in this. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. D- did y'all have a worst part for y'all? Worst part? Just r- yeah, rampantly th- chasing women around Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll, I'll second that one. It adds nothing. A value other than making I, Brazil look pretty. <laughs> kind of funny though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get that. So all of our our worst parts are from Brazil, at least. So uh, if you're systematic ecology and you want to visit Brazil, don't tell us about. It. I'm just, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> they made a conspiracy um, theory is they didn't like Brazil, and so they made it the worst part of the film deliberately. <laughs> yeah. There we go. There we go. All right, zero to ten. Then how how are we rating this? I got to say. Unfortunately, because this this might be the lowest I've rated a Disney film, even though there were so many parts that I've loved and characters that I loved overall as a film, I'm probably giving it a six. Um, it's definitely better than your average movie, but not by much. Yeah, I'll give it a four. <laughs> Worse than your average movie? Yeah. Hmm. All right. Yeah, I'm, there's no reason to watch it as a movie. Like I can just go watch Pablo the Penguin or I can just go watch the flying burrito. Yeah. Wow. I am so used to being like the caustic critic around friends <laughs> and I'm putting this at a six, five or seven. And I feel like that's like a 10 compared to you two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, well, if I, if I had to be positive about it, 
if I'm rating specifically the music video portion of the, the title or song, I'm probably giving that like a nine and a half because <laughs> that was pretty darn close to perfect. It was great. Also, since I've spent all day watching different things with these characters in it, I just think I might have that song stuck in my head the rest of my life. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so speaking of which, we mentioned some of the other appearances, but I did kind of want to just knock through. Uh, well, first, I want to see if you guys agree. For the most part, people know the three caballeros, and it's not because of this movie. <laughs> right? Like, they're just kind of a general consensus that we're like, we're aware of what they are, and most people don't watch this. Yeah, I'd say that's fair. Uh, I don't know if that many people actually do know the three caballeros. Really? Yeah. This is not a popular movie. No, it's not. And the character is... Two of them aren't that popular. Okay. I see. I feel like I see them in a lot of on a lot of stuff. And like, for the most part, if you say three caballeros to people, most people know what I'm talking about, at least. I don't know. But but I, I do. I do think that their other appearances are more significant, especially if you were born in the 90s and grew up with House of Mouse, because they were pretty big part of that for a few episodes. They were one of the um, bands, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they took over the show for like three episodes or something. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it was great. Um, the 2017 DuckTales, they were had a whole episode that they were a part of, and they were seen again throughout the show and part of the ending song. They showed up um, in that they uh, him, Donald and them were had a college band. So they kind of uh, retconned it a little bit. They were a college band um, and <laughs> And uh, Ban- Panchito had, um, he had, instead of pistols in his gun holders, he had cell phones. They eat, eat them? Yeah. Yeah. They, they, I was like, man, that's lame. <laughs> and of course, of course, uh, Jose no longer has a cigar, which is sad. I mean, um, for a children's uh, cartoon. Yeah, I get it. I yeah. get it. Yeah, you know. Better with a cigar. Popeye, Popeye looked <laughs> good. Looked it's cool. a good design yeah. choice. Yeah. It's a bad habit. Yes. But Terrible. It's cool. Choice. Awful to do. Solid yeah. Snake, Popeye, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I, I still think the funniest one for me is uh, is One Piece, where in the uh, the American <laughs> cartoon version, they replaced all cigarettes and cigars with lollipops. Yeah. The four so Sanji just always has a lollipop at him. <laughs> wow. Get all four kids. Yeah. No, yeah. the funniest part about that is the guns. They turned the guns into like mops or... Uh, specifically <laughs> Helmeppo's gun they turned into like a code name kids next door like what trap gun uh, it's like a boot on a spring with a trigger <laughs> or the invisible guns of Yu-Gi-Oh yeah uh, Yu-Gi-Oh's dark very dark Weird. Yu-Gi-Oh's dark so another place they were retconned <laughs> they also got their own show in 2018 the legend of the three caballeros but in that they were just the descendants of the three caballeros was Donald uh, Jose and Pinchito because the original three caballeros were like these three great heroes, and now they have to be heroes and defeat the darkness. It's a whole thing. How long did um, that last? I don't know. So far, six or seven episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching it today for some reason. And that's where it says the brave caballeros instead of the gay caballeros. Yeah. Mm. So that's that's where that came in. Um, but but Donald's birthday is the same in that. So that's cool. Uh, and of course, in Disney World and Disney Parks in general, you see these characters a lot in Coronado Springs at uh, Disney world. There's the three caballeros are all over the hotel in different places. They're like the main feature of that hotel in Disney and burrito. The donkey is seen in the shop. They made a full life size statue of him. That's in the shop there. So that's cool. Um, all star music resort. TJ and I went to that. I think this year, even uh, the pool has uh, the three caballeros in it. One of them. So that's cool. Um, it's a small world. If you're in Disneyland in California or in Hong Kong, they put the three caballeros in the the Mexican part of that ride. And of course, there's the Grand Fiesta Tour in Epcot, which I got to say, of all of the three caballero stories so far, I think that ride might have my favorite version of the three caballeros. Yeah, it feels kind of like you're in the movie. I mean, TJ yeah, mentioned it earlier. But it's a better like, movie. <laughs> I went there over Thanksgiving with family and it was a pleasant experience. Yeah, they... And they retconned it a little bit, too, where Donald, instead of being obsessed with women, was just like, hey, I just want to be on a vacation and get left alone. And that was a lot more relatable. I'm like, yeah, Donald, I'm uh, with you, That sounds dude. more like Donald. 
yeah, let's just go to the beach. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, it, it was great because uh, the other two were trying to find him throughout the ride, right? And you're going through and eventually they find him and it ends with them doing the song. But it was just funny because I'm like, man, Donald Duck's just out here trying to have a beach vacation in South America and they don't want to let him. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Poor guy. Yeah, yeah. So, so we mentioned it earlier. I, I wanted to dig a little bit deeper into the wartime propaganda stuff. Um, like I said, Disney at this point is largely being funded by the U.S. government. I think it was the Navy branch that was funding them. Thus why Donald Duck is doing commercials for people to join the draft for the Navy. I I find, you mentioned earlier, that it, it's very much this gray area here where, yeah, we typically don't like wartime propaganda, especially if it's aimed at children. Kind of a no-no. And yet, this movie, I feel like, does a lot of good or maybe not the movie, but these characters, because you have that ride in Epcot that does a really good job at showing kids, you know, the Latin America culture and really uplifting that instead of objectifying it or anything like what some of the movie did. Um, and you see them when they took over the House of Mouse and they did some songs in Spanish. And it was like, hey, that was really cool. You know, for me as a kid where I grew up, that's not something I heard a lot of. So I feel like Yes, wartime propaganda, but also we knew that Walt wanted to introduce people to other cultures more. Like that was one of Walt Disney's original goals. So it's kind of like, uh, I mean, where <laughs> where does this fall exactly? Because if Walt wanted to show people other cultures anyway, it kind of seems like maybe he was just taking advantage of the, the military wanting him to do this. Because it's like, ah, cool. I wanted to do that anyway. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he wanted to make his money. That's so true. He was going to make his money. Yeah, I mean, I think it's super important as part of the good neighbor policy, which is one of the reasons why this was made, as Josh was talking about earlier, that this was supposed to be a bridge between United States and Latin America. You can argue whether or not it worked. Uh, I was trying to remember uh, box office because it, I think it premiered in uh, South America and Latin America first and the year after it premiered in America. Mm -hmm. And I think it did OK there. And then it kind of bombed here. Yeah, I mean, you could argue that there's a reason the movie needs to be made in the first place because American audiences weren't ready to connect with that idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's definitely fair. And I don't know. I, regardless of the movie itself, I like that Disney has characters that aren't just because it's really funny, too, because if you want to not see racism or not see racial stuff. You can find a way not to. You can obviously say that Mickey Mouse, many, none of them are white. They're animals, right? But I mean, it's very clearly by their lifestyles, the things that they're doing that like, it's very much white culture. When you're talking about Mickey, Minnie, Goofy, etc. I love that we have these staple characters, I, I would say, Jose and Panquito, who are very clearly not white culture, right? <laughs> like, it's like, hey, I like having these characters that, because, yeah, Disney goes to other places, but they typically don't have icons from other places. And this is something that Disney's able to use, like in the Coronado Resort, in the Grand Fiesta Tour, where it's like we actually have staple characters that represent these other cultures that we actually want to uplift and not just objectify. So well, not only that, but they're treated as equals to Donald. Yeah. And if people who know more than him about certain things, which is how many films are you going to see at that time when the American doesn't know more than everyone else? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then even if you took it like to today's time um, in The Legend of the Three Caballeros or in DuckTales and whatever, well, what's funny is that in DuckTales, all three of them pretend because they, they're meeting up. They haven't seen each other from college. So they all act like they're super successful now, but they're all actually broke, it turns out. <laughs> right. So the very much equals again, they very much like come back to the same level. Donald felt like he had to pretend like he was better than he was because they're so successful and I can't let my college buddies know that I'm not that successful, right? So that had very much equality. In The Legend of the Three Caballeros, a lot of the times, Donald's the goof. Donald's the one that's just like angry and whatever. And yes, yeah, sometimes it ends up working out because accidents and because he's Donald Duck. Disney likes Donald Duck. But usually the other two seem a lot more competent than him, which I think was the case in The House of Mouse too. They seemed a little bit more competent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So were, was there anything else y'all wanted to talk about about these characters and what you think their significance is either in our culture or in the legacy of Disney films? I think they're odd. They they kind of stand out as being distinctly different mm -hmm. from most of Disney's cast of cartoon characters. But 
relevant. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. Do you ever have that moment when you realized you used a word instead of the word you meant to use? I've been Often. saying Latin America to mean Central America this entire time. <laughs> when that means, and that encompasses basically Mexico down all the way to Chile and Argentina. So my bad. <laughs> That's why we need a fact checker. It's fine. I mean, I think they do. I mean, Uruguay is a little bit further south. South Pole, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's just South or America. Yeah. <laughs> uh, middle. South or America. Middle South. Yeah. Middle South. South Pole is Middle South America. <laughs> no, Uruguay. Perfect. No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, yeah. South Pole. <laughs> of course, South Pole is now Middle South America. Indeed. Yep. We're just They've broken the UN the treaty that no nation can ever control Antarctica. Yeah, no, it's all just America now. Um, <laughs> welcome to the new world order, everybody. Um, <laughs> yeah. Our most controversial episode to date. <laughs> Three caballeros. <laughs> oh, God, that's funny. Um, yeah, you know, you know, we didn't talk a lot about the animation. I did want to mention some stuff because they didn't spend a lot of... And this is something that I, I get irritated with current Disney because they don't do any new style they don't do any new technology they kind of feel like they found what they think is animation peak and just settled for it and a lot of your older disney what it's known for is being creative and really pushing the envelope on what you can or can't do they sort of did that with live action and animation combining here but for the most part because they were limited on funds they focused a lot more on the technique park i mentioned that earlier but part of like a different part of animation history here they did stuff, and this is what I love, of um, Donald Duck trying to get himself to normal size and that whole animation scene. Like, you don't see that in current day animation. I find that goofy stuff just, that's fun. Or when they want to do, they did a lot more simile or, um, yeah, I think simile is just the right word. And that kind of animation where you literally see the fog laying out like a blanket. <laughs> and I was like, ah, I miss that. I miss that being in our animation. Like, that stuff is just fun for me. Yeah, they're playing a lot with animation in very fun ways. So it does enhance the appeal of the film to see these things being, some of them being tested for the first time, I believe. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and playing with the music as well. Just mixing that animation and music like the audience is, this is how I'm supposed to feel now because these two are combined. It's like, oh, okay, I like this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, okay, F any, fi any final notes or any takes on could Disney be using these three characters better? Yes. Well, it sounds like they've been using them a lot more frequently than I thought, but <laughs> yes. I'm all for more. Yeah. Uh, DJ, how, how would you, if you were CEO of Disney or co-CEO, you and Bob Iger are now partners, how would you propose they better utilize these characters? Uh, I would propose that we immediately replace Bob Iger with Jose. <laughs> <laughs> He just runs Disney now, and he's back to having a cigar because he's in charge. He can do what he wants yeah. now. Well, it's me and Jose. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I would definitely. I would have them out and about more. Yeah, you mean as like the character meet and greets kind of stuff, or yeah, I would character meet and greets. Put them in more things. Have them on commercials, stuff like that. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. They'd be good for for some good commercials. Uh, okay, Christian. Same question. Now it's you and Bob Iger, co CEOs. Yes. My boy. You, yeah. <laughs> um, so in the interest of making money, which now I have to do as CEO. So thanks for that. What I'm going to do is there is a exclusive package once per day in a lottery system where everyone has to throw in a ton of money. I don't know. I have to talk to my uh, my uh, <laughs> board of directors. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Talk to them and say what the price should actually be. But people will have a VR headset where. You have the three caballeros as your tour guides to Epcot. And well, that would be fun. You have the voice actors and the animators all chained to desks because I'm in charge now. And they get to <laughs> voice act. You get to talk to them as you're going through your exclusive trip with just them in Epcot. Perfect. I'm going to make millions. Perfect. I, I do like part of part of that idea. I like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it would be fun. Um, so in uh, Harry Potter world or the Wizarding world of Harry Potter and Universal, Certain places they'll have over the speaker, some of the characters speaking and you can like overhear them. They should definitely have that in the pyramid where like when you go to the bathroom at different places, you just yeah. hear the three caballeros just doing their thing. That'd be cool. Just just more of them would be nice. Um, I, I really wish 
which I'm surprised they haven't done something more like this um, because they had the DuckTales cartoon, which excellent cast, excellent show. They technically did a three Gabbieros cartoon, which I didn't even know about. So it must not have been marketed very well. (laughs) Um, They currently are doing new Mickey Mouse cartoons that look like a really old animation style. I wish that they would basically just just start over and have some of these shows and have them interact with each other. Give the three Caballeros their own show and have them just, you know, randomly cross over into the new DuckTales or into Mickey Mouse show. Like, make them more prominent in that kind of way. And also make these characters relevant again, because I don't want them to die. (laughs) The word I was looking for was accountant. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) We can't count. We don't have money to count. What do you mean? (laughs) You don't need your Funny. accountant. You have you have the the CRO or the CCO, Chief Creative Officer. You're the CEO. You're their boss. No, okay. I mean, you pawn that off on somebody else real quick. Never never been in charge of that. There's a reason for that. So, I'd go mad with power. Yeah. True. True. I've never had money. Apparently, neither have the three caballeros. They all just pretended like they became famous and wealthy. Uh, met up on DuckTales and are broke. I just. <laughs> yeah. I really enjoyed that. Like so, something about that particular episode. It's like season three, episode five or something. It It's just so much fun. It's like every it's like the town where everyone's nice or something is the name of it or everyone's kind. It's just so much fun because it's like it's funny, especially because Christian and I are old college buddies. But you definitely have that where like when you meet up with old college friends, sometimes you're sitting there then you're thinking you're like, oh, man, he's a lawyer. I can't tell him I'm, I, I can't tell him I, I work for. Photo. What's funny is like I feel like my job sounds a lot cooler than it is, <laughs> you know, because I'm like from the I, way you were describing it the other night. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I work at your book photo. Like I work for Life Touch, and I'm like, man, that sounds like it's like an actual like legit thing. But like in my own head, my own subconscious, I'm like, I do nothing, and <laughs> I'm a loser. <laughs> yeah, I have no shame. I'll mm-hmm. tell anybody that asks. Yeah, I work at Chipotle. Having worked at Chipotle, I think it's awesome. I think more people should work at Chipotle. It's a good time. <laughs> I'm a seminary student. I have no money. <laughs> I still don't have money. Yeah. I just work at Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, he works overtime every single day. He doesn't have enough time in the day to spend any money. And yet he has no money. It's amazing. Yeah. I'll just hand it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just every other burrito he hands out $10 in hopes that you'll become the new KM at a <laughs> Chipotle in Greenville. So consider it if you're listening and you're in the area, just you know, drop by. Yeah. Yeah. We're hiring. TJ needs help. <laughs> We're looking for sponsors <laughs> for the podcast. Yeah, yeah. That that too. I um yeah. I just want to see more of these characters. I want them used more. This movie may not have been my favorite movie, but these characters are absolute icons. Very well done. I love them. I don't have anything else to add. Did y'all have anything else? I'm good. No. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and jump to the wrap up here. Uh, We're going to start with some recommendations. Uh, Just, you know, whatever comic book games, whatever you've been into lately. Uh, Christian, you want to start with a recommendation? Yeah, I can't remember if I talked about this or not, but I'm currently playing in the Call of the Netherdeep module for uh, D&D 5e, and I'm having a ton of fun with that. So my recommendation is find friends and do that. That's a... Okay, that's fair enough. Uh, and if you want to hear more about what's going on in that story, join our Discord where I talk about it. Mm, yes, yes. I um, I had a recommendation and then immediately changed it. I was going to tell you guys to check out the DuckTales comic book that's coming out like in a week or so. It's almost out. DuckTales uh, Munchkin. An imme- yes, do that. Um, but I immediately realized, I bet there's a Three Caballeros comic. So there is. So this recommendation also goes to myself. Uh, the Three Caballeros Write Again. It's a comic book from the year 2000. I don't know anything about it, but I'm going to check it out right as soon as we're done with this and continue my day at the Three Caballeros. Yeah. TJ, yeah. What's, your, what's your recommendation today? If you are an RPG person, tabletop, not video game, or a sci-fi person, or a mystery thriller person, or a nerd, mm-hmm. uh, so Check out person. the Blade Runner RPG. Mm. It is so mm. cool. I just got it. It's awesome. It is It is great. Nice. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, that being said, uh, they might do an episode on Blade Runner at some point. I feel like we should. If you want to hear episodes that we have done, which we haven't done that yet, 
go to systematicgeekology.org. You can hit the host tab. You'll see my name, Christian's name, and TJ's name up there. You can click on our names. It'll take you to a page that has a playlist of all the episodes we've done. It also has the other stuff we're a part of, like our TJ and I's other podcasts, all that. So go to that website, systematicgeekology.org. Check it out. It's a good time. While you're there, you can leave us any recommendations for stuff to geek out on that you have, or just let us know what you've been geeking out on if you want. That's cool, too. And of course, we need you all to do us one very important thing. And uh, just remember that we're all a chosen people, a geekdom of priests. This was an Anazal Ministries podcast. If you enjoyed this show and would like to learn more about our network, be sure to check out the Anazal Ministries podcast network.